intuitive viewers how's it going how are you i hope you're doing well i was just going to show you where lucy is because everyone's going to ask me i'm doing the laundry and so lucy's on the bed she loves when the sheets are just it's just the sheets and not the comforter i think it's nice and cool and stuff so she's just laying out she's hanging out um i hope you guys are doing well i hope everything's going okay um i've had a tough week <laughs> already it's only Wednesday so um, but Lucy's doing good and I, I'm so happy about that last night was the first night she wanted to like um, take a walk and so she's really like coming back to her old self so I again I wanted to thank you guys so much for your prayers and love and light and everything so I just really appreciate you guys so much and I also um, just want to tell you how um, um, lucky blessed i feel to be able to speak to you guys um i meet the most wonderful people in my readings and i'm going to meet more of you this coming year and i'm really i'm just so happy to do it and i'm so happy to um be able to be making that kind of personal contact with people um I feel like you guys are my friends, even though I haven't talked to most of you, but when I do, it's like, it's like talking to a friend, you know? So, um, I, I am really, uh, just really grateful to you guys for, for trusting me to, to help you on this path and to, um, you know, watch the channel and listen to the, the, the messages from my guides. And I, I know that takes an element of trust and I, I do appreciate that. I, I just want to say that. Um, and, uh, I do wanted to, I wanted to address a couple of things, and this is why I had a hard week this week, <laughs> right out of the gate, Monday morning. Um, I had a little bit of a, what is it, a, a disagreement with, a, <laughs> with somebody who was thinking of doing a reading, um, and they, it was the tone that I didn't, I took um, umbrage too because actually the points I thought afterwards I thought you know the points I, I will think about these things and I'll try to figure it out and I wasn't uh, I wasn't um, rude or, or mean but I was um, I did take a, a offense and and I know that's my ego and I know that I need to not let that get involved and so that's on me but um, it basically was a policy thing that um, this person was confused about, didn't quite understand, but also um, didn't have all the information about and made it personal. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and so, but I did want to, I did want to, um, after I, you know, had this exchange and then I thought about it and I thought, you know, I, I'm going to address these things just in case there are other people wondering about them or if they come up and you're just you're thinking, hey, why is this this way or whatever? And so, and I did try to explain, but anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, <laughs> um, the two things were um, the fact that the, the, the um, appointments are booked so far in advance and that you pay up front for the appointment. So you're actually paying for something now that you're not gonna have until June. And I was thinking of it like a concert ticket or you know something like that, or, or a ticket to a play or something where you, where you purchase something and then you, you cash it in later, like a ticket is what I was thinking of it. And she was taking it more like, you know, like an appointment at a beauty parlor. It's like, you don't pay until you get the service. So that was one thing that this person was having a problem with and which, and, and at, um, again, it was the, it was the, the way it was framed that I, I had a, an issue with, but I did try to explain that. And I, and I did think about that. I thought that is kind of weird. I guess I, maybe I wasn't thinking about it fully that way. Um, so if that is an issue, what I, what I wanted to let you know is, and why I set the system up the way it's set up is because um, I'm kind of a dunce, <laughs> I don't remember stuff. And last, the last year and a half was so difficult because I, was, I had three different ways to pay that were completely separate from my calendar. And it was so confusing and I never know who paid. And I, um, people were always asking at their appointment, have I paid you? Do you know if I paid you? And it was just this thing that was just a headache. And it was had nothing to do with you guys at all. It had to do with me and the fact I am not good at remembering who paid, who didn't pay. And I'm not, I'm not great at this stuff. I needed a system to do it for me because I'm just not, I'm not a bookkeeper. So I found this system that I could set up and 
you have a couple of options. You can have them, you know, it was like you could have them pay it, when they do the appointment, which is the way I'm used to paying for stuff. So I just thought, well, just do that. And it was a couple other ways, but the other ways you, again, you had to keep track of stuff. And I just don't, I'm just not good at that. So I thought I'm just going to do this and then, um, it'll be done. And then I, we don't, when you don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about it. And then we can just focus on the appointment. So that's was my thinking, but I get it now. I understand. Well, this, you know, I'm paying for this now. And I'm not getting it till way in the future. What if something happens or whatever? Da, da, da. So what I want to tell you guys and what I, I should have said to this person is that anytime you want to cancel, even if it was the month before the day before, I would figure out a way to find another way to schedule you in, or I would give you a refund right away. I don't have any kind of tough policy. I don't have a, a policy of like, you have to do the appointment or you, it, it's very, um, I'm very understanding of life happening. Life happens. And I, I said before, you know, if you run into a thing where you're like, I could really use that money right now, and my appointment's not till June, let me know. You can cancel it and then reschedule it at another time. It's totally, totally fine. I have no problem with that. So I just want to let you know that although you're, you're kind of like you're, you're locking in an appointment, you can, you can have access back to your money anytime. If you feel like I don't want to do this, or if you like took the classes and you feel like, you know what, I feel like I got a good handle on this stuff. I don't feel like I need to go. Maybe I'll go another time. Then you can cancel your appointment, but I never, it's, it's totally fine. Just email me and say, I want to cancel, you know, I'm whatever it, you don't even have to give a reason and I will send your money right back. Okay. So I just want to let you know that I have a very loose system and I didn't make, I don't think I, I, to this person's credit, bringing it to my attention in the way I didn't like, but <laughs> they did bring it to my attention. I just thought I would address that because I feel like, um, I get it. I get it. So, um, and I, and I got my ego out of the way and I looked at it and thought, okay, I get it. I understand. Um, we were looking at it two, two, two different ways. And so I understand that way, but to remedy that because it's set up now and I don't want to switch it. I just can't do it. Um, just, uh, know that you can cancel at any time. Okay. So that's, and, and even if it's the day before, even if it's the day of, I've called people and they've said, I've got a headache. Is it okay if we cancel? And I'm like, sure, it's fine. We can reschedule or whatever you're going to do. I'm very flexible because I, I have a child. I have a dog that's, that's rearranged my life for the last two weeks. So I get it. Okay. So that's that. Um, the other thing that they brought up though, that I, um, wanted to tell you is that I have the one, let me start here at the end of last year or the end of the last, um, before I started doing the appointments again, I had 150 people on a waiting list. And I felt so badly about that. And I, I did, uh, you know, piece it away little by little by little by little, giving them different options and things. And it was a, a, a nightmare. <laughs> and I felt so bad. I feel for me, it was just like, I wish I could fix this, but I'm one person. And I, I just felt so badly um, that people were just sitting on a waiting list. So I thought, how can I remedy this next time? So I decided to, to make, I took away the hour appointments because I felt like a lot of times I'd, we'd come to the end and we'd talked about everything. So I just felt like if I have to go over five minutes, it's okay. Um, but I'll go back to 30 minutes so that I'm fitting in more appointments and I will, um, I will, uh, make sure that, um, it's one per person and then I'll just go to the half the year so that if they want to do another one at the other half the year, they can. So that's, you know, you're doing one now. And if you want to do another one later, you can. Um, I don't want people to get addicted to a, a psychic or a psych or psychic readings. I don't want people to feel dependent on me. And that's what, and th so that brings me to my other thing that I decided to do was the classes. I felt like you guys have the ability to do this. Some people don't want to learn and they don't care and they don't want to do it. They just want someone else to do it for them. That's fine. But if you want to learn and if you want to say, well, you know, I just want to go to a psychic when, you know, once a year or when I feel like it or for my birthday or whatever, then you have that option. And you, cause anybody can do this. It's a matter of learning. It's a matter of learning how to slow down your thinking and figure out how you're being connected with and then to, to, um, practice. And so, 
and, and then trust the messages that you get. So I put the classes together for that reason. And the other thing I decided to do was to, uh, well, keep it one per person, do the 30 minutes, and then, oh, and the other reason was that I wanted to do these three things was because I didn't want to raise my prices. Everybody that, and, and it's nothing against any other psychics or anything else, everybody does their thing their own way. But some people suggested to make it a smaller list was to raise the prices. I didn't want to do that, okay? And, th and that is just some th something people do just to keep, and I understand why, because you feel awful if you've got 150 people on a waiting list. But, but I wanted to keep it affordable. That was something I wanted to do. So, um, that, and that's just my thing. And, and, and it's not anything saying about any, what anybody else charges. That is totally, that is a personal personal decision and it's also where you are in your life if you're the only person making money and you you know you want to do this full time you know what you have to earn you know so that's on everything but anyway that was another suggestion given to me but I don't want to do that I want to keep them affordable so that's the idea behind it but I did say that my that um a friend Christy of the channel is doing um a, a program called uh, Nine Good Deeds, and it's talking about doing nine good deeds. And it felt very, you know, I felt very comfortable kind of partnering it with the channel because it uh, promotes kindness and goodness. So um, she asked if she could buy three appointments, but I feel like the person misunderstood. They're not for her. So I wasn't going against what I had said. They're for three separate individuals. She's just purchasing them to give them away to three separate individuals. <laughs> so um, that's that. And in fact, you can do that if you go to um, at Nine Good Deeds on Instagram and put in Earth Angels and just um, just you're entered into the contest to get the one of those three readings okay so those were the things this person brought up and i thought i need to get my ego out of the way and address them and um and they caught me on a uh, a morning where um you know lucy is it's wonderful she's doing better and we're grateful every day but <laughs> i will say the medication she's on makes her um have um to go potty a lot and so she wakes me up about every hour on the hour so i've had very little sleep for the last week or so um so i was running on very very little sleep so once i had a nap i was like okay i feel better i can i can address these things and i can see where this person i i get what they're saying i get it so i just want to say that and um and uh yeah, I wanted to address those things. And in case other people were thinking that, like, why is this or what is going on or whatever, I just wanted to address those things. Um, I do want to let you know that the, I do have spaces still open, um, from between now and June. I do have, um, I do have, uh, also, um, the classes are there. So if you want to go to intuitiveview.com, you can access both. Just go to pricing and you'll just scroll down and you'll see everything. So intuitiveview.com, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, and so there you go. All right. So um, I wanted to move on to our information and something I was really so happy and relieved to finally see coming out was the FBI put out an announcement saying, everybody vote. We know what Rush is doing. And it's been what I've been seeing for months. And so I am so happy that for and i'm happy for you guys that you're finally like um you can finally see what i was seeing <laughs> which was that the fbi has got this they are on russia they have private companies looking at russia they have our allies looking at russia they are f protecting our vote they're doing everything they possibly can and what they were doing just now was undermining trump which made trump freak out by the way I, I know it's I, I don't know if he's done anything on Twitter yet or anything but I can see him freaking out because it undercuts his message of the whole thing's rigged they're like no and they're they're wanting us to know we've got this so all you guys need to do is vote that's it just do just vote we have got your back so I was so 
relieved and so happy to know that exactly what I've been seeing is exactly what is happening. So I'm, yeah, I'm just thrilled. I'm just thrilled because I, and I also think it was a warning shot to Russia. Like we see you, we know what's going on and we're letting people know we know what's going on. And I also think it was a, um, a warning to other countries as well. Do not get involved in this. <laughs> Do not get involved in this. So it was a, it was a shot across a lot of bows. Okay. So I just want you to know that. And I also, they had four different people that did like messages and I didn't watch all of the messages all the way through. But when I saw their, when I saw them, I thought, um, is one of these people anonymous because I just got that feeling. I, and, and so, and I, and just like me, you guys need to follow those, those, those weird feelings you get of like, I have this feeling, one of those guys, but if they're not, if it isn't Chris Ray and it isn't attached to Chris Ray, it's somebody that has that kind of, I think they might be in that, the law part, whether it's lawyer or like law is like that, the law part, it, there's something about that, that rings very, very true to me. So, um, if it's not one of those four guys, I feel like they're, it's somehow interconnected or something. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. And I, um, like I said, there's a big betrayal coming for Trump and that may have been it. I mean, uh, to be honest, I haven't really, um, delve back into that part of it so I can, you know, check with my guys and get back to you about that. But that could have been it. I mean, that could have been the big betrayal. Cause I feel like it would be something that would throw him off his game, throw him off his footing and be like, uh, you know, my own, uh, what can I do? My own people are against me. So that may have been it. So I will look into it further and I'll let you guys know. Um, that's just how I work. I'm, unfortunately, I can't, you know, nah, anyway. Um, so, um, but I did want to let you know that I had um, a very clear message from Spirit that I needed to let you guys know. Well, first of all, a couple people asked me is about the next debates coming up. Oh, and I wanted to look at the Kamala one. The debates coming up with, with Trump and Biden, and I feel like he may go back to the hospital. And I don't um, want to put that out as some kind of, you know, um, curse or anything because I, I, I just feel like he may go back and it may be during one of those times. Um, maybe he does it to get out of it. I don't know, but I feel like he may go back to the hospital because I don't feel like he's, I feel like he's probably stable, but I don't feel like he's, uh, like he, it's like he's better, like he's well. Um, and I do feel like these, these, um, medications are messing with him, not only his body stuff, but his mind as well and his emotions, um, which that didn't need to be affected anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's that. So, uh, I do feel like, and I have felt they would come to some kind of agreement for this stimulus stuff. So, um, and, and in fact, when he, as soon as he said that somebody wrote me and said, it's, it's, what's going on with this? You know, I thought they'd have a, a stimulus program and what's happening. And, and I saw it in mid September. I really thought that they would come to an agreement, but a lot of this stuff has to do with free will and they want to, they're having a hard time, um, because the Republicans are being so obstinate, but they're trying, they really are trying. So I'm hoping they can get this done. And I know there are so many people in need. So, um, I'm, I'm still uh, very hopeful that they can do this. And I know there's, there's real, a real desire to do this. So, um, yeah, so I hope that, I hope that they can get it done. But, uh, you know, as soon as he wrote, you know, stimulus talks are off. I got a message saying, oh, what's going to happen? Sorry, that's bugging me. Uh, what's going to happen? Because, you know, I thought they were going to have a, and I wrote, uh, he's going to reverse himself. And like within like a half an hour, he'd reverse himself. So I, hopefully this will happen. So I, I, I hope and pray this will happen. Um, so, but that, I got a couple of messages from spirit that were very um, clear and kind of bigger messages. So I wanted to deliver those. And those are, these are the kind of message just where if I don't deliver them to you guys, they won't go away. I won't be able to get rid of them. So 
one is one that I've gotten before, but it was it was different this time, and it was and this is how spirit works as well for me anyway. Is I might get a message that means one thing at one time, but I'll look back at it and it will mean something else depending on where we are now. Um, that vision of of Trump as King Kong that's one of those ones that kind of I keep going back to because kids, so I I keep pulling more out of it, and that is the way spirit works. They work in 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 levels. Um, just because they have a, a more knowledge than we do, so um, of what may be coming and what can come. So, um, what I want to tell you is that I gave a message a while back that we need to start kind of letting go of Trump, seeing him walk away, and um, kind of um, it's almost like allowing him to be gone, <laughs> you know. They came back with that same message, but in a much more, um, there's more to this than, than that. We do need to start almost like manifesting his leaving, and that's what the message was before. But the other thing they want us to be aware of is that we've never had this happen where a leader has taken up so much of our time so much of our energy, so much of our, our mental state um, have, has dictated so much of our life. We've never had that before. And so what they want us to be aware of is that when he goes, which he is going, I'd want you guys to be rest assured he is going. And of course, there will be an eruption of euphoria when he goes. But my guys want us to be aware of the fact that when he goes, even though it's awful, he's going to leave a hole in, in, in a lot of our lives where it's going to need to be filled with something. And so when that goes, um, and, and you know, we've had this kind of direction because of all the stuff that's happening, we've had this person and this direction we could, we could put up kind of all of our anger and all of our, you know, um, you know, you just wait until, you know, justice is coming. And, you know, all these people that have been in our, in our sights. And when something horrible happens, we can, we can direct our, our anger and our upset and our blame onto somebody and something. And what they're wanting us to understand is that when he's out of the way, the stuff they've done is going to be there. And we're going to have to kind of start patching things up and start fixing things and start healing from this very, very abusive, um, time consuming and, and the soul consuming, um, uh, trauma that we've been through. And so what they're wanting us to do is kind of let go of him emotionally. Now start to let him go because then him just as a person will be kind of the next, you know, the last thing we'll have to let go. So it is kind of like leave him emotionally now. Um, look at him more, if you can, distance yourself from him. See him as fading out. Um, and also notice more how much of your time is spent and how much of your energy is spent um, thinking about him, looking at his tweets, disliking him, thinking this is what, you know, I hope this is what happens to him and, and the stuff around him as well, because that stuff is all going to kind of be gone. And then we probably will have like the, the, the trial and stuff that will come afterwards and the justice that will come afterwards. And we'll follow those storylines too. But when those are done, those will fall away. And what's, what we're left with is kind of this healing process that needs to take place. And also deciding what's our part in that healing process. And that's like, again, and that's the other part of this message is dig deeper into that. What do you want your part to be? Because you can decide. You can decide now. I want to be, I want to. And I, I talk to people all the time that are like, I want my life to be in a more spiritual um, place and I want it to be, I want it, you know, be 
um, doing what I do, but in a more spiritual way. I want to do this job, but I want to add spirituality to it. I get those things all the time. And I think it's because there's some place in us that knows it's going, it is what's going to be needed. And the spirit is going to help us. And so we have this influx of kind of spirit energy that's happening. And we're going to need all of these tarot readers and all of these, you know, intuitives and all of these um, healers and Reiki workers and people that work with animals and people that work with healing the earth and you know all of these people doing all of this work and that's why um, you know I like promoting new channels and new people because we're gonna need it all and so if you're thinking about that or if you're an artist or whatever you're thinking of doing and you're thinking you know uh, this has really made me think, I don't really like my job. I want to be doing this. This is the time. Start thinking about it and just start doing it. Just start putting it in motion because we have this, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're having this influx of spirit energy that is happening now. And a lot of it is going to stay, but not all of it will. A lot of it's going to be within us. That's how it stays. And if we keep it there and we work with it and we kind of um, keep it busy, you know, through our, through our spiritual work and giving it to the universe through us, um, that's how it stays. But it can also go. Um, parts of it can also go. Um, something that Another part of this that I wanted to deliver to you also, and this is something that I heard from um, Dolores Cannon. I always want to say Claiborne. I always want to say Diane Cannon or Dolores Claiborne. Dolores Cannon, through her work, is that there, have on, there are only, the only time that we have influxes like this of spirit energy where they come and kind of it, I don't want to say interfere, but they, they kind of um, help and not, not take our free will from us, but help in a more direct way is when we're about to do something that could destroy the earth. That's when they get involved. And I didn't quite understand that. I could see that there were different, part, different times they had done this before, and I knew one was around World War II, but she kind of put an explanation to it. And she has said through her research and her work that she has found that this is when they do this, is that they will come and kind of interfere in, in our free will only when we're about to do something that's destructive to the earth itself that could end it all. And that is what is happening. And that's why this is happening now is because we're at a cusp of we need to start fixing the earth. And we need to kind of raise the consciousness so that we're able to f help the earth, help animals, help mankind. And this is also why we have a lot of people leaving, a lot of animals leaving. Um, my sister did a great, great Jacob's Journal about this that I don't know if she's put up yet, but it's about this balance that needs to take place. And it is fascinating. So if you guys have a chance, go and listen to that. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I can't remember what it's called, but go, go and look for it. Um, if it's not up, I'm sure it will be up soon, but she's, she, I listened to it and it is incredible. It really, really is actually it was written, it's written. but anyway, it's, it's amazing stuff. And, um, and she's going to be doing something new with that work. So I just want to make you aware so you can look at her. her she's at Cl uh, clairvoy cardvoyant cardvoyant.com um, and uh, that's her website and then cardvoyant chris is her youtube channel so check that out but there is this this dance this balance that's always trying that universe is always trying to keep up with and that's why karma happens and that's why donald trump will have to serve some sort of sentence for what he's done He's going to have to pay in some form because not because it's a punishment, but because there needs to be this balance. So as soon as you do something really, really rotten, the universe is on it. Okay. Be aware of that. The universe is on it. And as soon as you try to manifest something, as soon as you try to put your, put good works into something, the universe is on it. It takes time. This stuff takes time. It doesn't happen overnight, but 
I promise you that is what's happening and that's how it works. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about those kind of, they're bigger things, but they're things to start thinking about and you, you have a stake in it. You're, you're part of this. So you can start that, that healing of, of letting Trump go and kind of bringing that healing energy in and deciding what your part in that healing is going to be, um, in kind of this new earth we've talked about before where things are just going to be so much better and there will be an age of kind of cooperation and interest in this stuff it, it, in in not only you know spirituality and kind of um being kinder and gentler and more understanding and more cooperative and all of these things um but also raising the consciousness that's what's happening and that's how this is happening so it's an it's a scary um frightening uh intense time to be alive but we're we're getting we're rolling into a very exciting fulfilling amazing time to be alive so that's what's happening and listen you guys we we chose to be here at this time <laughs> like it or not <laughs> this is what we did so <laughs> whatever <laughs> this is where we are but we're together we're doing it together right and and um, that's something that I want to also remind us of. Speaking of that, I did want to let you know about one, uh, a new channel. Um, her name is Barbara. She's, uh, Barbara at, uh, Queens Avenue Tarot. I love these names. They're great. Queens Avenue Tarot. She's very relatable. She's very, um, down to earth. You'll like her. So, um, but she's at Queens Avenue Tarot. It's three separate words, Barbara. Um, so, um, she's in, you know what, she's like at like 700 and something views. So, um, let's see if we can get her to a thousand. I think that would be so exciting and so fun to do. And I, I do this because, um, and, and it's okay if you go to a channel and you're like, oh, I don't like this at all. You might be thinking that about my channel and that's fine too. But there, this is, this is the time. This is the time. It really, really is. And I want to do, uh, like I was saying, what is your part in this? This is one part I feel I can play is helping other people get started and get going. And I know that it's so scary to put yourself out there. And I know that if they have that little bit of encouragement, just a few people saying, good job, keep going. I love your channel can change things. It can change whoever tunes in. It can change you. It could change. Maybe you become best friends with this person. I don't know what I'm putting in your way, but I know that it's something positive. So be part of it. Okay. And I know that also these channels for a lot of people are a lifeline right now. Some people don't have access to the outside world. They're either out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I hear people from people like that all the time, or they're um, in, in a situation where they can't leave their house very often, or they have lots of pre-existing conditions, so they can't go out very much, or they're in a work situation where they're isolated and they don't, they're a single person, you know, they don't have family and stuff around. So it's them and their dog or their cat, and this is their lifeline. So that's why I'm doing this as well, because it's, it's a great lifeline to have. These people are so are so good. They're trying so hard to do good. And you may not resonate with every single personality and that's fine. That's totally fine. I'm the same way. There's a few channels that I really like and I, I love to tune into them and I, I kind of wait, you know, I have to wait until I've already read on stuff. So I, I, then I hurry up and look at that video cause I want to see them, but, um, they're wonderful. They're so, and they're just trying to do good. And I just think we need that right now so badly. It's so needed. It's like, you know, balm for the soul. It really, really is. So enjoy that and, and, and bathe in it once in a while, especially after all this stuff. I want to look at Kamala, um, for tonight. Um, I'll do that live right now, but I've got a few things about that, but I wanted to look at that, um, real quick with you guys and see how she's going to do. Man, you guys, she is ready. She was ready for this a month ago. She's like, I am ready. Um, I feel like it's interesting because I feel like something people are going to comment on or, or is her tone. It's a perfect tone. I feel like she's very compassionate. I feel like she's going to make a big deal about 
the the people like what you're going through um how people are hurting right now how people are feeling this right now i feel like she's going to really go in a lot of things with healthcare. um it's really going to be about like the kitchen table the people you know the people that are are in need of help right now and they're hurting right now and this administration's not doing anything and we're going to help you. I feel like it's going to be in that tone, but I feel like she strikes the perfect tone of being kind of tough, but also very compassionate. You know, she's going to be tough with Pence, like you screwed up, but really compassionate with the people. So I feel like there's going to be that, a really good balance that she strikes, a really good tone. And I feel like that's going to be a comment we hear uh, um, a lot with with her I feel like um, Pence is gonna you know what I'm seeing is um, interesting and I think they're just talking about Pence but they might be talking about the whole debate I'm not sure but um, in 1992, I want to say, um, there was the debate between, um, or 91 or whatever, but it was um, between George Bush Sr. and Clinton. And there was a particular debate where George, it was a, it was a town hall. And of course, you know, Clinton blew it out of the water. He excels at stuff like that. He's so comfortable with people. And, you know, George Bush Sr. is of a different generation. He's a little colder. He's a little more stoic. Um, I don't think he was a cold man, but I think he, in that setting, he was a little more standoffish. He's kind of elite. You know, he's he's from a rich family. Um, but he was so, he seemed so out of touch with the common person, the regular person. And I'm seeing that debate. So there's something about Pence that's going to be like that. So I don't know if it's kind of the the stiffness or like, well, I mean, he is, I mean, he's wooden, but, but in, in his relatability, like that he's cold, um, that his, maybe he feels out of touch or that he, he's, um, can't relate to just regular people or there's something about that because I'm seeing that debate in particular. So I'm, it, that tells me that I know he's not Clinton. So I, I feel like it's going to be more like that, that kind of like out of, out of touch kind of woodeny kind of, um, more cold feel. Um, so I'm seeing that and it could be, they could be also showing me that debate because of the contrast between them because Clinton seems so, warm and normal and stuff and and senior seems so out of his element and out of light touch with what was happening so anyway i i just wanted to i wanted to look at that real quick it looks like she's going to be great um and i feel like i don't know about the other debates when i looked at them before i only saw one for the president and the president the president vice president and the president i saw only one for each but i feel like trump may be going back in the hospital. So I, you know, and I don't want to put that as a, as a, like a negative thing, but I, I do feel like there's a lot more going on with him physically than we know right now. And I do feel like maybe he'll just use that as to get out of it. I don't know, but I'm seeing something about the hospital and him being kind of having to go back. Okay. So I know this has been a really long reading, but I'm going to still, I'm going to pull a card for the power, the power of surrender cards. Cause I haven't done that in a while. And I think it's fun to do. Cause I don't ever, I don't really work with cards and I don't, um, you know, I, I work cards a little when I, when I do private readings, but I don't really use them, you know, at all for this stuff. So, um, but they look like this. I've shown you guys these before and they're beautiful cards. They look like this. And they are very simple, very simple to use. So if you're like, I'm not a cards person, but I like the idea of it. These are great ones to use. I've gotten a lot of emails saying, and I don't have a stake in these in any way, but, but I just like them. But I got a, um, I got a lot of people saying that they got them and they loved them. So um, if you got them, great. There's great. Okay, so I just hold them up to myself just to kind of give them, I just hold them up to my heart chakra and I don't know a lot about chakras but I know that it works for me so I just do that 
and um, I'm going to give them just a tiny shuffle. I don't really shuffle them really. It's just to kind of put my energy on them. Um, so I just, I just, I fan them out and then I put my hand over them about this high from the card like that, about like this, this high from the card like that. And I'll usually feel kind of heat in my hands. Um, but you might feel like a tingling as you go over one, or you might feel, um, you know, a, a, a you know, um, some kind of sensation in your, in, in your hands that tells you to stop, or you might get just a feeling you should stop. And that's when I pull a card. And so I'm going to ask for t this week, um, the rest of this week, cause I'll probably talk to you guys over the weekend, but I'll, I'll do the rest of this week, um, where we should be putting our energy and what we should be surrendering to. Um, I already talked about a couple of two big messages from spirit about, um, letting go of Trump. And figuring out um, how we're going to be part of this kind of sp spirit healing energy that needs to um, help us after he's gone. Okay, so um, and if you're watching this channel, you're you're a part of this. Whether you like it or not, you're 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 a part of this. So I'm just I'm just delivering the messages so you can hear them. Okay. there I'm gonna pull two sometimes I'll feel like I pu should pull one and then I feel like I should pull two so they may not both be for you another one may be for you. you don't need this but um but usually at least one of them kind of resonates and you'll be able to and and if it, it doesn't maybe it will resonate later in the week maybe something will happen where you'll be like oh yeah I remember that card came up so these are um like I said they're they're interesting very interesting um cards like I said they're they're kind of creepy <laughs> they're very accurate they, they give you what they give you what you need so um, so this is an interesting one and um, um, but it says surrender to the wisdom of your body and that is interesting because when I had that really bad day <laughs> Monday, <laughs> and I had that experience where I was feeling really overwhelmed it ended with a migraine and so um, I understand this and this is for me personally clearly but I think this is a great one actually for what we're going through right now because everything feels like it's coming to a head don't you feel that way and also with all the talk about COVID and all of this health stuff that we've had to to think about and worry about and stuff so I think this is a great one it says um, listen to your body's messages about a person or situation if you feel physically drained or uncomfortable be cautious if you are energized and happy, move forward. Again, I mean, again, super scary cards. <laughs> but Trump is so, isn't that the truth? After, can, uh, sometimes when I've listened to him speak, or I just hear his voice. I can feel it in my physical self. I can feel my, my ten, you know, the tenseness. I can feel that. And it's so interesting that w this message about letting him go kind of separating starting to separate ourselves from him and part of it may be that you know we were we are going to need physical stamina after this period or even during the voting period we're going to need physical stamina so that is very interesting this is also talking though about your your empathic skills that when somebody is not a good person or you hear stuff that you feel like is it is is wrong or doesn't feel right or somebody like you know, QAnon always strikes me that way. I don't want to put out any feelers, but that kind of stuff where it just feels icky or feels wrong, back away from it. And people too, be cautious. If, if it, it makes you feel cautious or uncomfortable, be on your guard or pull or kind of start to pull away from it. Um, if it feels you, makes, makes you happy and energized. I can't think of, um, I don't know if you saw Biden's speech at Gettysburg, but it was so, it just made you feel so calm. It just made you, the, the setting, the, 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 the kind of wind in the background and him talking about unity and coming together and we can do this and we're going to be okay. It was just so soothing. It really, it was just like soothing for the soul. So I, this is on so many levels. This is a fantastic card. I love the pictures too. They're so inspiring. They're so pretty. And again, we got this one, you guys, Surrender to Prayer. So clearly, um, 
Spirit is asking us to pray. Prayer works. It works on a collective level. It works on an individual level. Don't expect prayers to um, instantly remedy something. Let it take time. Um, it takes time for spirit to work with us. I find that with myself. Um, when you uh, delve more into this stuff, you'll see how there is a rhythm and a pattern to things, how, how often you get messages, how you get them, um, and to know kind of when you're maybe not in tune enough to get a message, you'll start to feel that stuff. And again, you know, the classes are there, take them. Um, uh, and, you know, pay attention to the stuff that resonates in them. Um, but it says, um, give yourself over completely to prayer. When you pray from your heart, you will be heard throughout the universe and answers and support will arrive. And I think that also is very important to not only know that prayer is not just for um, changing something in your life or making a change in your life or, or getting something or doing something differently or achieving something. It's about um, asking for comfort sometimes. It's about asking for um, something to come in and give you a, a feeling of peace so that you're not afraid or you're not worried. Um, so surrender to the wisdom of your body in all its physically, mentally, spiritually. Pay attention to those, those inner uh, alarms, whether it's physical or, or um, emotional alarms, and surrender to prayer. Okay? Everybody have a good one. Take care. Take care of yourselves. This is a great time for self-care. Take care of yourselves and vote, vote, vote. Do that one thing. I got my voting ballot today. I'm going to vote today. I'm going to send it in tomorrow. Um, and that's the main thing you have to take care of after that. You know, anything else is gravy if you can help anyone else do it. But for now, that's your mission. Okay. All right. Everybody take care. Bye. Bye.